Hi everybody, it's Stuart Hillard here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Stuart Hillard Makes. If you're not already a subscriber, please do. And also tap the bell icon so that you always get notifications when I put a new video up. They're every week or so. And um, lots of fun things to make especially sewing projects at the moment. I'm really into my sewing. Now, um, I love giving gifts, um, especially little sewn gifts, and um, I don't want to spend a lot of time making them. I'm like you, I've got loads of things going on in my life, but I still like to give handmade gifts if I can. My Infinity Scarf is a really quick and easy make. It's great for fabric lovers. You can really use some beautiful fabrics for this. Um, it takes a matter of a few minutes to make and is, is very, very giftable. An infinity scarf means that it's a, a loop, basically. It's a loop scarf. So um, just like this, I'm going to put it on. A bit of modeling for you. What do you think? Gorgeous? I do what I can. Now, I've used quilt weight cotton, but you could also use a knit fabric, jersey. You could use a stretch velvet. You could use fleece. All kinds of different fabrics, really. Even something really light, maybe like a, a light silk. If you are going to use a stretchy fabric, like a jersey or a knit fabric, make sure that when you sew it, you're using a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. Now, the one that most of us use when we're sewing uh, stretchy fabric is known as the lightning stitch. And when you look on your sewing machine, it's the one that looks like this. It's like a real sharp, like a lightning bolt. A zigzag will also do the job. So if your machine doesn't have a lightning stitch, bah, just use a zigzag stitch. If you use an ordinary straight stitch with stretchy fabric, then when the fabric stretches, your stitching will break and pop. Um, and we don't want that to happen. Let me show you how to make this uh, infinity scarf. You're going to love it. Now, for this, you're going to need a strip of fabric. Now, I've used quilt weight cotton for my version, and I've used about, it's about 65, 66 inches in length, and it's half the width of the fabric, so it's about 21 inches wide. Those aren't exact measurements. Um, if your fabric is a little bit narrower, a little bit wider, slightly longer, slightly shorter, it should still work out. Just be aware that obviously once it's turned into a loop, it's got to be able to go over your head, so you don't want to make it too short. If you're using stretchy fabric that's got a bit of give in it, of course, you can do shorter infinity scarves, maybe 40 inches long is fine and still get a double um, loop around your neck, but it'll be sort of tighter, um, but because you've got that stretch there. But you don't want to try and do that if you're using sort of non-stretchy cotton. So I've got my strip of fabric. Um, and then the first thing that I'm going to do is fold it in half, right side together, so that I've got a narrower, long, whoa, really long strip of fabric. I'm using a bit of K-Facet Collective fabric today. This is a Brandon Mabley design. I'm going to grab some pins and I'm going to pin all along that longest edge where I'm bringing my two edges together. I'm always forgetting to leave an opening, so I'm going to put a couple of pins the other way, sort of into the seam, and I'm going to put them about four or five inches apart. So can you see I've just left them there? And they're probably about six or seven inches down from the top. I mean, where you place them doesn't really matter, as long as you remember to leave a gap in that long seam down the side edge. OK, let's get this sewn together. So I'm going to start sewing my quarter inch seam. I'm just going to reinforce using that little backwards arrow on my sewing machine. And then when I get to the first pin that's going into the seam, I'm going to stop, reverse back, just a few stitches, and then stop again, cut your thread, and then move the sewing machine onto the next pin that's going into the seam allowance. So forward a couple of stitches, use that reverse arrow again, just to reinforce. And the reason why we're doing that either side of an opening is when we turn the whole thing through to the right side, we don't want that seam to pop open. Now it's pedal to the metal, all the way along that straight edge now. Take your pins out as you get to them. This would be really smart made in wool as well. Okay, so I've sewn a big long tube 
The short ends are open and I've left about a four or five inch gap in the middle. I love the next step. It's the smallest things that amuse me. I just feel like it's putting on the biggest glove puppet in the world. So you're gonna put your arm into your scarf and then you're gonna grab the top and then you're going to pull. <laughs> and you're pulling that edge up to meet the top. So there's the bottom and there's the top and we're bringing them together. Don't twist the scarf as you're doing this. And you want to make sure that the seam allowance and the seam allowance are both together. They're both the same side. If they're at opposite sides, your scarf's become twisted. And probably the easiest thing to do is you just pull it back to the wrong side out and start again, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push the seam allowances in opposite directions so that they nest nicely together. And I'm gonna pop a pin in there. And then I'm gonna bring the top and the bottom edge of that loop until they meet, until they match up. And I'm going to pin all the way around the top edge of my scarf. Should just use about five or six pins to do that. Maybe not even that. More or less our last job, it's almost our last job, is to sew all the way around that um, circle. Okay. Um, the easiest way to do that on your sewing machine is actually to remove your accessory box and expose what we call the free arm. This is the bit that we tend to use if we're turning up trousers or adding a cuff to a sleeve or sometimes when we're making a bag as well. And what it allows us to do is we can then slide that tube on quite easily and we can sew around in a circle. Okay. So let's do that. So needle down and I'll take my first pin out and I'm going to reinforce at the start and finish but there's no need to leave a gap. So I'm just getting now to where I offset my seam allowances and just push them in opposite directions. So we'll sew over that and if you're sewing in a circle you want to just make sure that your fabric isn't getting caught as you're doing it. So keep stopping every now and then and just make sure that that loop is all staying nice and freely moving. And again, we'll just reinforce. Remember that gap that I left in the size, about four or five inches? My rule of thumb basically when I'm leaving a gap is if I can get four fingers in, then it's plenty of room. It's enough room for me to get my hand in and grab a hold of the scarf. And then I'm gonna pull it through. Oh my goodness, <laughs> a loop, it's worked. So all I need to do now is go back to that little gap, which I can't find now. <laughs> it's magically closed. Oh, there it is. And now just like any open edge in a bag, or you could hand sew this, I'm just gonna machine sew it for speed. And it's pretty discreet. So I'm just gonna start sewing, reinforce, keep those edges nicely lined up, and then reinforce at the end. And that, my friends, is done. Now, how giftable is that? Well, there we go, we're done. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial from Stuart Hillard Makes. And um, do please like and comment the video. And most importantly, send me photographs of yourself wearing your infinity scarf um, so I can see what you look like. Um, until next time, um, happy sewing, happy making, and I'll see you next time on Stuart Hillard Makes.